We've been touched. Somehow we've been touched. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, touched by an alien. We'll explore the phenomenon of alien contact and their purpose here on Earth. They take me right down the streets and I see all the bodies and the whole bit. And I realize that they're trying to give me a message. With our case studies, you'll hear exclusive testimony from the victim of the first known abduction. They examine a long needle. And he said, my face, my And the abductees who discovered proof that aliens are manipulating the entire course of their lives. They had been abducted since childhood, separately, brought together and made to interact. I'm completely convinced that they have planned Claire and my meeting. We'll investigate the alleged alien implants used to track humans. Triangle in the hand is like an identification for them. There is tissue missing from my hand. And go into the operating room as surgeons remove an actual implant. You'll see our final analysis of the evidence in our Unex report as we uncover the facts about alien contacts on unexplained mysteries touched by an alien. Alien abduction is no longer just a story created in our science fiction. More and more psychiatric professionals refuse to discount the tales they hear from victims describing hostile encounters with aliens. The details of most abductees are striking in their similarity. I mean, this is terror. You're being kidnapped. You don't know what's going to happen. I thought, this is it. I'm going I'm to die of a heart attack or something because it was not human. Transported to an alien craft, some report being subjected to horrific experiments and invasive probes. I hate what they do to me. I hate what they do to my mind. I hate what they do to my body. And it was not a fun experience. This is not something I would wish on anybody. But are the aggressive tactics that accompany most UFO encounters drowning out a more important message? Every single abductee says over and over, if they would just walk in the front door, not scare me, not paralyze me, and sit down and say, look, we have a problem, uh, would you help? Every, practically every abductee said if they would ask my permission and explain, I might say, sure, I'll help you. Northern Wisconsin, Karen Klinger and Dennis Morosqua sneak away from a family vacation. The young couple noticed something in the night sky. This bright orange star that was uh, along the horizon of the trees on the other side of the lake zipped right to the top of our heads and we looked up. I think the best way I could describe the flight is like that of a dragonfly. It was just, it would zip here, stop, zip here, stop, zip, 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 really fast. And I'm like, what are we watching? And we finally started calling my folks down from the cabin so they could watch. And my mother was a little scared. Denny's sister's boyfriend went into the house and got a large beam flashlight and flashed at the UFOs three times. Suddenly they just completely disappeared. And about maybe a couple of seconds later, they flashed back at us the same amount of times as we had flashed at it. By this time, we knew we were watching something that we had no explanation for. It was really strange and definitely appeared to be intelligently controlled. After the incident, Morosqua and Klinger felt disoriented and ill. Later, when the couple talked about the incident, they realized that they could not account for several hours during that night. At one point we looked up and the moon was directly in line with the um, rear view mirror of the car. And by the time we got back to the lake, which shouldn't have been very long, the moon was setting. It never occurred to me until that moment that there could possibly be some missing time involved. I felt sick. I felt, I mean, I literally felt nauseated at the thought of it. In search of more answers, Dennis and Karen each underwent hypnosis. Compared notes later, they corroborated very closely with some of the points that Karen uh, had brought up under hers. We both got these images of a grid-like pattern. The apparent purpose of their abduction 
was to make those touched the carriers of a message. The Earth is connected to the universe. If you feel that this has happened to you, by all means, do whatever it takes to uncover the information, because it's worth the risk. Jeannie Robinson has been given a message. She says she has been abducted several times, dating back to childhood. Encounters flooding her mind with information. I started getting these thoughts in my head that didn't seem to belong to me. But I write it all down. I've been writing it down. Jeannie believes she knows why these visitors have come to Earth. We have researched your physiology to understand the elements that are parallel to our own. We mean you no harm, but we must save ourselves from extinction. When acceptance of the reality of our kind is tolerated within your population, a more open relationship can begin. For experiencer Steve Neal, the message was directed toward human beings. He was told that our race is in need of help. We've separated ourselves from nature. We have the sense that nature's over there and we're over here and, and that really this world was kind of made for us to do whatever we want, to trash it in the name of personal gain and profit. And I think that we're in danger of becoming extinct like the dinosaurs. On many of his abductions, Neil has been shown horrific images of the future. They take me into the scene, whether it's, you know, if it's the world after a, a nuclear war, they take me right down the streets, and I see all the bodies and the whole bit. And I realize that they're trying to give me a message, you know, and that I'm supposed to take this message and take this possible future and do something about it, try to prevent it. For other abductees, similar terrifying visions have forced them to join a support group. People have been told that there's going to be um, devastation that there's going to be tremendous earth changes. They, they've, they are shown these images. It's something that's put into their mind by the abductors. It's very difficult to explain. Could an alien race actually be abducting human beings in order to warn us of the Earth's future? These abductees believe this message and believe there is a solution. I think it's very important to point out that all of these images and so forth of disaster or this or other can be reversed. It's not written in stone. This is our planet. And uh, we are very powerful beings and we have to start using that in a positive way because then we can create beauty, we can create love, we can create serenity instead of destroying everything and complaining that there's no serenity. Members of this group have accepted the knowledge they have been given. Now they want the world to know. They're trying to not only help out their race, but help out us in case we can't live in this environment anymore. We might need different kinds of bodies. We might need different kinds of adaptations. We might need to be able to handle different kinds of climates. For the abductee community, the debate is only beginning. What do the aliens really want? We will continue covert contact for now. Soon we will be able to establish a more active and cohesive relationship, an equal partnership within the alliance of intelligent life forms. Coming up, what really was behind the otherworldly ordeal that this woman endured? He said, don't be afraid. We're not going to harm you. We just want to do some tests. Are the clues to the first recorded abduction locked in the fibers of this dress? These two women say they've been linked for life by an alien experiment. They had been abducted since childhood, separately, brought together, and made to interact. Are ETs trying to teach us a lesson? The message is, the sandbox that you're littering is not your own. And are aliens tracking us with implanted transmitters? It's probably between my eyes, up inside my brain. I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. And later, see exclusive footage of an actual implant extraction. We'll wrap it all up 
with a breakdown of the evidence in our Unex Report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries touched by an alien. No solid explanation can be given for the abduction phenomenon. While the public brushes most cases aside, many prominent researchers are becoming believers. When I began studying abductions, I expected these cases to turn out to be some kind of psychological phenomenon, possibly hoaxes, but certainly uh, nothing more serious than that. There was something really peculiar here. I kept seeing a consistency in these things that I didn't expect to see. And the people seemed so sincere and uh, so normal that it became very difficult to attribute these reports to anything other than a genuine experience. Reports of extraterrestrials may not be a recent occurrence. Evidence suggests that the alien phenomenon dates back hundreds of years. The concept of being abducted by some strange beings call them supernatural beings, if you will, has been with the human species from, from its beginnings. Folklore is full of cases where people are kidnapped by fairies and carried off to a fairyland that is in some ways very much like the uh, interior of a UFO or the other world that people see when they're taken on a UFO otherworldly journey. When they lose a period of time very similar to the stories of, of UFO abductions. Most people have had very few truly unusual things happen to them that they could not explain. Most people do not see balls of light that they can't explain. Most people don't see small beings standing around their bed or on their couch. Most people don't have odd missing time experiences of two, three, or four hours, uh, which they cannot account for. That, that normally does not happen to people. But for abductees, they have these experiences often uh, they they have a lifetime of them famed journalist cdb bryan was an abduction skeptic it just was inconceivable to me that people were being scooped up by ufos and having these strange medical procedures performed on them but after attending an alien abduction conference at mit bryan's views were changed forever it sounded to me like a perfect new yorker piece uh, little green men at MIT. I didn't for a minute take it seriously. But in the course of the three, four days that the conference uh, took, I moved more and more towards accepting that there might be a phenomenon here that is unexplained, and less and less away from the fact that they're all start waiting in it. These people were quite convincing. Possibly the most convincing story came from Indian Head, New Hampshire the site of the first recorded instance of alien contact with humans. Betty and Barney Hill were driving home one night, nearly 42 years ago, when they were blinded by a brilliant light. As it came out over the highway and stopped, we looked up and we could see a curved picture window, a red light on each side. So Barney took the binoculars to get out of the car to try to identify this craft and he could see a group of men standing in the window looking down at him and at that moment he became fearful he had the impression they were trying to capture him the terrified couple jumped back into their car and raced away from the scene but on arriving home they discovered several strange marks on the trunk of their car and a mysterious substance on Betty's dress. They also could not account for three hours that had passed. Somehow we just had a feeling of contamination. So I said to Barney, this sounds weird. And I don't know why I'm saying it. We've been touched. Somehow we've been touched. The Hills experience led them to seek the help of a noted psychiatrist, Dr. Benjamin Simon. Their hypnotherapy sessions revealed a trauma unlike any on record. We go deeper and deeper, deeper asleep. Looks like a big, big pancake. The, the, the cow motor died. This 
creature, this leader is telling me something. Just stay there, he's saying to me. We're not going to harm you. We just want to do some tests. And they're taking me up to the object. It's All right. I'll take you my head. Just All don't right. pull oh. the binoculars away. God, give me strength. Pull them down. Run! If there's a God, give me strength. I gotta get away. One of the alien tests appeared to be a form of amniocentesis. The examiner has a long needle. It's bigger than any needle I've ever seen. And he takes a needle into my nail. <laughs> and I'm crying and I tell her it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting. Get out. The memories recalled under hypnosis were so traumatic Benny and Barney were not allowed to hear their own tapes until months later. Word of their experience quickly leaked out, triggering a frenzy over their claims. Well, we became known almost immediately. Like, Barney and I would go out to eat, and people would come up and ask for an autograph. What did the aliens want with the hills? And what was the purpose of the tests? The last remaining piece of evidence of the Hill abduction sits in this closet. Could the dress worn by Betty Hill during her abduction yield any answers about the alien experiments? And you can see here the blue, and this is where it became stained by the pink powdery substance. This is a place I cut out and sent it to a lab. They were unable to analyze it. They have no idea what caused the pink stain. Next. On Unexplained Mysteries, this abductee claims to have been given special powers. I was told that I would have an energy and that I would be able to help people who are ill. We'll hear from the co-workers with a mysterious link to their past. We both meandered away from the picnic area uh, into the woods and uh, were subsequently abducted from that clearing together. I was that other child. And later, the horror of being implanted with an alien tracking device. And I cried and I screamed and I got very scared because I didn't know what was going on. I got it. Yeah, that's it. Triangular. I wonder what it is. And finally, we'll put it all in perspective in our exclusive on X Report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. touched by an alien. What do experts think is the reason for the spiraling number of reported abductions? An alarming trend is developing. Friends and even entire families recall being taken. Well, the issue of shared abductions is something we should sort out here. Many, many, many people are abducted with other abductees. I felt when I first met Diana that I must have met her somewhere before or seen her somewhere before. I felt that I knew her quite well, but I couldn't explain that. It was sort of, I know this person. And she was very comfortable around the horses. And it was sort of an instant recognition. And I hired her that day. Claire worked on the ranch for four years. Then a nighttime incident on a dark road changed her life. On my way home, fairly early in the evening, I see, saw lights, I pulled over to the side of the road and was blinded by these lights. But I, I was frozen to the spot, I didn't know what was happening. After the encounter, Claire got sick and remained disoriented for days. I think both of us thought she was going crazy. Um, too much stress that you know maybe she'd had a blackout. She also could not account for five hours of missing time lost during her short drive. She was reporting to me that she seemed to have seen some strange things. She had memories of this weird hand that she drew. And in another puzzling twist, Diana began to experience physical changes. Could these events be related? My eyes had improved dramatically. And I could think of no other rational explanation why my, my eyesight was also improving, unless I too was being abducted. Claire and Diana decided to undergo hypnotic regression therapy. 
to help explain their mystery. And sure enough, the first memory I had was screaming because no. I had alien eyes right in front of my face and I couldn't get away from them. What are they doing to you? What are they doing to you? Doing something to my head. You're okay. After Diana's graphic visions of alien experiments retrieved under hypnosis, she discovered corresponding scars on her wrists. A childhood memory may unlock a key piece of evidence about patterns of abduction. When I was about 12 years old and had been on a picnic with some friends uh, from school, I saw a little girl coming toward me and she was wearing a blue uniform. She had some kind of an accent that I thought might be British. Without stopping to think or discuss uh, why we were doing this, we both meandered away from the picnic area uh, into the woods and uh, were subsequently abducted from that clearing together. And when Claire described to me what this other little English girl was wearing, I then went to the closet and pulled out a jacket that exactly matched her description. She described to me how she used to dress going to school in England at that time and I didn't know she'd attended school in England when she was nine years old. I was that other child. We found a pattern that they had been abducted since childhood separately brought together and made to interact as if the aliens were interested in human relationships and human friendships. I'm completely convinced that they have planned Claire in my meeting um, since they started, since we were such small children. I think it's amazing that we met again in this, in this life, in this world. Uh, although I can't explain it. I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt that there was someone alongside of the bed. This is Judy. By her request, her real name will not be used. And I reached my right hand out and I touched the shoulder of someone who were probably the size of a five-year-old. Like many who report alien contact, her first experience was traumatic. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. It was total terror. But I didn't know at the time what was going on because I didn't know about alien abductions. Judy says years later, she was subjected to one final medical procedure. And he was putting in um, what appeared to be laser type objects in my brain. He put one in each temple, one here, and one in the back. And I was told that I would be able to help people who are ill. Some abductees feel that after the return from abduction event, that they have increased powers, psychic powers or healing powers. This is extremely unusual. It's something that we can't dismiss out of hand, and it might be related to the abduction phenomenon. Judy's special abilities have helped many people. After about three minutes, I noticed I was beginning to feel very warm, and the area under her hands was intensely warm. And then my whole body began to feel um, tingly and just relaxed. And gradually, the nausea and the sickness was just disappearing, even in 12 hours. Is Judy's gift an indication of the good intentions of aliens? Or is it an extraterrestrial warning about the future? It was almost as though they were saying, ready or not, here we come. Coming up, the touched people who are taken by aliens over and over. I call myself an experiencer because they're not taking me unwillingly. Um, I go quite willingly. The messages given to those chosen for abduction the message is, wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. The experts examine the alien agenda. It's the human race, uh, as we have known it, is becoming not extinct. It, it can't survive. And later, witness a secret operation to extract an extraterrestrial tracking device. 
What makes me think that this is extraterrestrial is the fact that I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. Then you'll get our ultimate roundup of the facts. Our Unex Report coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Mysteries touched by an alien. Are extraterrestrials trying to send us an urgent message? I woke up terrified, absolutely terrified. Light came in, bed shaking. It's kind of like it all happened at once. I opened my eyes and up on my wall I saw the face of an ET very clearly. For a couple of weeks I was real scared of the dark. It was a real adjustment. Shannon Hernandez came to terms with her experience with the help of her mother, Debbie McGill. Debbie recalls being taken repeatedly throughout her own life. She feels her contact with aliens was a positive experience. Abductee is, it has a negative connotation to it. it. It means stolen. I prefer to call myself an experiencer because they're not taking me unwillingly. Um, I go quite willingly. Abduction counselors say that this is an important trend. Some people's experiences can truly be described as abductions. They are taken kicking and screaming, struggling against their will. Others evolve over time as they understand what is happening to come very cooperatively and become uh, associated with the beings that they're working with in a, in a participatory role. Over a series of therapy sessions with Dr. Richard Boylan, Shannon explored the visions shared by the aliens. Do you notice anything about you? Pictures. Do you know why you're seeing these pictures? Mm, to learn. This is about the future? Yeah. How far ahead? Way distant in the future? Not way distant. Pretty close in the future? Next few years. Based on the pictures, what would you say is coming up in the next few years? Major changes. Ge geological changes. Is there some kind of overall message you take from this or lesson? Yeah, not to worry. Things will be okay. Boylan sees similarities in the experiences of abductees. ETs give a variety of different kinds of messages, such things as earth changes, um, cataclysms, uh, geological weather, um, epidemics, um, social unrest, wars uh, have all been shown to experiencers. Debbie believes the aliens use telepathy to transmit their apocalyptic prophecies. Did the ETs communicate with you while you were seeing these pictures? Yes. And what was the flavor of their communication? Any general flavor? A sense flavor? of urgency. Urgency. But urgency yeah, for what? For me to understand something. Dr. John Mack, a psychiatrist at Harvard Medical School who works with abductees, believes there is an alien message to be decoded. I thought this is crazy. I mean, I thought this is not possible. And I'd seen many, many cases and worked for two years before I said, look, there's a mystery here. I can't explain this. There's something like what they're saying seems to be happening to them. I had this flashback of being on this table, being surrounded by these beings. Joe is a patient working with John Mack. Little gray guys with big dark eyes, and one of them's putting a needle in my neck. He feels he has been abducted regularly since childhood. I would have experiences that were so real, that were so lucid, they were every bit as real as me talking to you now, and yet I would dismiss them because they were so out of context. Joe has also come to identify with his alien abductors. Because there's a part of me that's terrified and doesn't understand, and yet there's this other part of me that they've already explained the procedure to and why. Once they begin to come to terms with their terror of, of the trauma, the experience tends to transform. They feel they're somehow connected with these beings. It was the most profound experience of my life. Although the, the, the experiences don't fit our notions of reality, there's no, no reason to believe that, that they're not telling the truth or that something occurred to them that uh, is real and they're telling it truthfully. The message is clear. We are told that the human experience, the human race, uh, as we have known it, is 
becoming or soon to be non-viable, not extinct. It, it can't survive. And it appears that these future scenes are either probable futures that will happen unless we clean up our act. My own sense of it, and this is the purely speculative, is that we are also being given a choice to change our ways. The message is wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. That you are not alone. Next on Unexplained Mysteries. Our abductees returning with alien devices hidden deep inside their bodies. There are alien implants. They are tracking us. The one that was placed in my ear, it was um, maybe six or eight inches long. It was a cylinder type thing. It was like a drill and it was very painful. And are these objects proof of the abduction phenomenon? Watch exclusive footage as one surgeon removes what many believe to be alien implants. the evidence in our Unex report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries touched by an alien. Not only are humans reporting to be contacted by aliens, they are being implanted with tracking devices within their bodies. When you experience an implant, it feels as if Something is being put in your body, and it was very painful. I'd have to say it's probably between my eyes, up inside my brain. And I cried and I screamed and I got very scared because I didn't know what was going on. The researchers that are studying these phenomena uh, say that uh, there are alien implants, they are tracking us. What are these devices, and why are these people being tracked? Two women make their way home along a deserted road. This was a cold November night. We both noticed a large light in the sky. At that point, the light descended at a rapid pace. It just dropped from the sky. The car just illuminated, and I grabbed my friend's hand and I said, oh my God, not again. This is Wendy. She requested we not use her real name to protect her identity. Wendy has endured repeated abductions. After the ordeal on the road, she feels aliens can locate her anywhere, anytime. These pictures show the odd scars that appeared the following day. Are these signs of implantation? My hand was inflamed with a uh, triangle shape just below my first knuckle triangle in the hand is like an identification for them. There is tissue missing from my hand. It's indented. You can feel this. It's obvious. For abduction survivors, memories of these procedures are especially traumatic. These memories made me almost go insane. It led me to a hypnotherapist and she helped me in retrieving the whole picture. I remember being laid on a table and then being laid down in the air with no table underneath me. They were doing something to my ear. us also and there have been many thousands of people coming forward that say they've been implanted I was absolutely frightened I knew exactly what it was I am afraid I'm afraid for my family so there are very few friends that I have told about the experience and the ones that I have told they don't come around anymore There are doctors who take it seriously, but they don't want to go public on it. There are surgeons around that will do these implant removals. These uh, people who've been abducted will be treated, taken care of. What we saw when we removed the objects is uh, quite different than anything that I had ever seen before. This surgeon wishes to keep his identity concealed. 
he will attempt the removal of three implants from two patients. These are the actual x-rays. This is a foreign body at the level of the base of the second metacarpal bone. This is the uh, object that we are going to remove. We were extremely interested in uh, documenting the procedure with uh, all available means. We used video still photography. In a two-hour procedure, three metallic objects are harvested from the two patients. I got it. Yeah, that's it. Triangular. I wonder what it is. The initial incision was made uh, to recover the largest of the foreign objects. And upon removal, the uh, patient uh, literally came up off the table. This was most unusual. The only possible way that this could happen is that the object uh, must have been in some direct connection with a nerve. Mike Evans assisted in the operation. What makes me think that this is extraterrestrial is the fact that I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. These objects were encased in a very dense, dark, gray cocoon. And it was so dense that uh, when I tried to remove this cocoon to uh, look at the uh, metal inside, I could not cut through it with a surgical blade. The implants recovered from both subjects were nearly identical. I think it has some frightening uh, aspects to it. How would an identical object get in a man and get in a woman? Different areas, different times. The odds of that are so extraordinary. Can surgery free abductees from the horror of a return visit? The answers are imperative for those still suffering the trauma of repeated abduction. If you are tagged, then they will find you. It doesn't matter where you go. You can go anywhere you want to. But the world is round. You cannot hide. When we come back, the Onyx Report examines the facts and addresses the mysteries. Is alien contact with humans part of an otherworldly research project? Are the people who were contacted by aliens carriers of messages about the future? And why are some people being implanted with tracking devices? We'll bring you everything we've learned from their visits in our Unex Report, next on Unexplained Mysteries. And now for the Unex Report. The alien abduction phenomenon has exploded. Nowhere is this more apparent than on the World Wide Web. A simple search on the internet finds hundreds of websites dedicated to alien abductions. Many display detailed artwork portraying visitors from other worlds. From the common gray to the less common reptilian, these vivid pictures tell a terrifying story. And there are sites that explore common symptoms of abductees. Ask yourself if you've ever experienced missing time, had unusual nosebleeds, experienced sleep disorders, or dreamt of catastrophes. According to this site, you may have been abducted. As the information increases and the victims continue to come forward, alien abductions can no longer be dismissed as mere hallucinations. Some people's experiences can truly be described as abductions. I mean, I'd seen many, many cases and worked for two years before I said, look, there's a mystery here. I can't explain this. There's something like what they're saying seems to be happening to them. And for the taken, it is becoming imperative to share their stories. I was blinded by these lights, but I, I was frozen to the spot. I didn't know what was happening. And he could see a group of men standing in the window looking down at him. And at that moment, he became fearful. He had the impression they were trying to capture him. To some, these ETs strictly come in peace with warnings for our future. I started getting these thoughts in my head that didn't seem to belong to me. I'm supposed to take this message and take this possible future and do something about it. The message is wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. Other experts contend that man is the subject of alien research. I mean, this is terror. You're being kidnapped. You don't know what's going to happen. 
We are told that the human experience, the human race uh, as we have known it, is becoming or soon to be non-viable, not extinct. We, we can't survive. They're trying to not only help out their race, but help out us in case we can't live in this environment anymore. In a more disturbing trend, abductees describe being subjected to cruel and shocking experiments. They were doing something to my ear. My brain was jammed and I couldn't, I couldn't function. It was uh, maybe six or eight inches long. It was a cylinder type thing. It was like a drill. And it was very painful. And I'm crying and I tell her it's hard to get out of it. And it was not a fun experience. This is not something I would wish on anybody. And some fear they are under constant extraterrestrial surveillance. And there have been many thousands of people coming forward that say they've been implanted. The triangle on the hand is like an identification for them. It's indented. You can feel this. It's obvious. I hate what they do to me. I hate what they do to my mind. I hate what they do to my body. If you are tagged, then they will find you. It doesn't matter where you go. You can go anywhere you want to. But the world is round. You cannot hide. If so, what does this mean for the future relationship between man and the stars? Until that time, we can only wonder at what extraterrestrials have in mind for us. The alien agenda remains an unexplained mystery. The documentary featured an extensive summary of the footage, the canisters containing the footage, and expert analysis from the likes of Stanton Friedman. One film expert noted in the documentary that the footage came in an old Soviet canister that had information labeled on it that was consistent with info written directly on the film reel. The numbers on the film's header matched the canisters they came. The header of the film had the crest of the KGB on it and the term for T.O.P. secret is shown in the first few seconds of this footage and image to the right. Having real-looking alien footage is one thing, but including the original film real canisters means you are extremely close to proving 100 authenticity. This is something that has traditionally lacked in other more popular alien videos such as the widely known alien autopsy or the alien interview videos. Three. Several KGB documents In the documentary, several KGB documents are produced to prove the film is authentic along with credible testimony from a former Soviet KGB operative who claims to know about the event. At first everyone believed that those debris were part of some novelty aircraft manufactured in the United States or England, said Pavel Klimchenkov a former KGB operative, but having done some measurements material analysis. We came to the conclusion that none of the domestic or foreign manufacturers known to us could have produced this apparatus, at least not in the conditions existing on this planet. Along with Pavel's testimony, authentic KGB top-secret documents were obtained by the filmmakers. Allegedly costing them $10.000, the documents described in detail a crash site recovery operation of a disc-shaped object and organic remains. Based on the credible testimony, KGB documents, Expert film analysis and the general good feeling one gets when watching this interesting crash site video, it is safe to assume that this film indeed may be authentic. What about the autopsy? This footage will be posted in our second part article along with thoughts and analysis, actors, training exercises, 
Skepticism, some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Another theory suggests the film was a training exercise. Yet no one has produced witnesses verifying this claim. One skeptical viewpoint suggests that the object's thickness is far too small to support any would-be alien pilot. The craft's outer edge is seen on the image is only 12 to 36 inches. However, it is not necessarily indicative of the overall thickness of the craft. The image was taken from the only part in the video sequence where the craft's edge is visible, and since the camera never goes behind, there is no way to tell how much depth the craft may have on the other side. Additionally, if you consider the side facing us may be actually be the bottom, we can easily see that this craft can easily fit the traditional flying saucer shape as demonstrated by the below images. In this documentary they claim that, since they only were able to acquire four canisters of film, more film footage of this incident is available. Such as the entire digging, cleanup, and inside the craft investigation. To this date, almost a decade after it went public, no other videos have surfaced. A UFO crash site allegedly filmed by the Russian KGB in March of 1969 in the Sverdlovsk region of Russia. The footage was later obtained by documentary filmmakers who then published the movie, The Secret KGB UFO Files A film expert noted in the documentary that the film came in an old Soviet film can and the numbers on the film's header match the cans they came in. The header of the film has the crest of the KGB on it and the term for TOP secret. An autopsy of the alleged pilot of the UFO is seen in the documentary film. Soviet doctors examined the burnt torso of the entity and it is revealed that the three doctors died one week later all from cerebral hemorrhages. Death certificates are presented as proof. Several KGB documents are produced to prove the film is authentic. Some have put forth the argument that an American production crew filmed the footage in March 1998. These claims are put forth on websites claiming to know the truth about this footage. To date they have failed to show even one current photo of any of the soldiers in the film nor any statements from the actors that they were indeed only actors in this film. This should be easy to obtain if the footage was recently filmed. Another theory suggests the film was a training exercise. Yet no one has produced witnesses verifying this claim. UFO aliens may have helped build pyramids of Giza says. Cairo University Archaeologist Head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department, Dr. Ayla Shaheen in December 2010 had told an audience that there might be truth to the theory that aliens helped the ancient Egyptians build the oldest of pyramids, the Pyramids of Giza. On being further questioned by Mr. Marek Novak, a delegate from Poland as to whether the pyramid might still contain alien technology or even the UFO with its structure, Dr. Shaheen was vague and replied I cannot confirm or deny this, but there is something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. Delegates to the conference on ancient Egyptian architecture were left shocked, however Dr. Shaheen had refused to comment further or elaborate on his UFO and alien related statements. Down below is 90s The Secret KGB UFO Files documentary, that deals with the fact that Russian had already discovered the tomb of alien humanoid in Egypt and something is beneath the pyramid. The secret KGB UFO files documentary interestingly supporting the head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department, Dr. Ayla Shaheen claim as well. Actually ancient Egyptian writings very often talk of beings from the sky, the sky opening and bright lights coming down to teach them technology and give them wisdom. Many pictures and symbols resemble UFOs and aliens. Possibly aliens built the Great Pyramid. And these solid long-lasting construction techniques were adopted by the Egyptians. Ancient Egyptian legends tell of Tebzepi, or the first time.
This is described as an age when sky gods came down to earth and raised the land from mud and water. They supposedly flew through the air in flying boats and brought laws and wisdom to man through a royal line of pharaohs. And of course, this was all thrown out the window when Christianity came along. Keep in mind that the gods were the one and only religion that there was. No other conflicting beliefs? Why? Well because it was fact, not faith. The modern church would have you believe that's it's just a myth. But you have to ask yourself on the edge of Oakham Razor, what truly indeed is more likely? There has always been the question. How did the Egyptians feed and care for the 100,000 s slaves that it would have taken to build the ancient structures like that of the pyramids in Egypt? One minute it is a very backwards country and almost overnight a highly advanced and technological culture sprung into existence. We now have the answer to that very question and evidence that the Egyptians had help extraterrestrial help at that. Thanks to Russia, the KGB and a top secret project called Project ISIS. Astrophysicist, neurologist and science advisor and advanced propulsion system gained access to the files of Project ISIS. This was a top secret project brought about by KBG concerning the discovery of the Tomb of the Visitor in 1961. Up until Sci-Fi purchased this exclusive footage from an agent of the Russian Mafia, it had never been seen outside the top secret facilities of the KGB. Sci-Fi showed it one time on television and as it stands today, no evidence of this film or the project is available. Except what we have copies of here given to us by a client that had taped the original show. This video is a a powerful documentary with actual footage filmed by the KGB and verified by specialists in the field. Authentic film footage. If we can somehow bring attention back on Project ISIS and prove it out, it will change the history of the beginning of the civilization of man. During the Cold War, Nikita Khrushchev was determined to show the world that communism was superior over the democracy. As he realized that it would be too costly to compete with the US in the space race. Khrushchev chose to go the other route. Having over 300,000 agents in the secret police and espionage organizations he focused most of this resource on alternative science, such as paranormal phenomena, psotromedic weapons, biogenerators and mind-altering machines. 1920s, during the Stalinist regime, a dark room was created where the KGB conducted psotronic weapons research on prisoners sentenced to die in political dissidents. After 1936 these files were transferred to the secret archives of the KGB, continuing on with their paranormal research. Khrushchev achieved great success with his biogenerators and machines to alter human minds, which worried, naturally, the United States, knowing that the Soviet Union was there to conquer and overthrow. Russia, being that its borders surrounded the largest landmass of the world, had the largest amount of UFO sightings. If they could capture one of these flying objects and reverse engineer it they could have the greatest advanced aeronautical designs. They got lucky in January 1986 when a spacecraft crashed in Dalgorsk but remained intact. The craft was back engineered and the process was quite successful. But to achieve the most superior advancement in global domination, they went in search for something that was only a rumor or legend. The Chamber of Knowledge in Egypt. If the legends were true, storehouse of knowledge left behind by ancient visitors from outer space was concealed in the Great Pyramid. A team of archaeologists were composed of Egyptologists from the Russian Soviet Academy of Science, was sent to Egypt. The fearing that the CIA would learn of this expedition, the Kremlin operated with complete secrecy. By the late 1950s Egypt accounted for 43% of all the Soviet aid for third world nations. When they started the ISIS project the Soviet military personnel in Egypt was estimated over 20,000. The heavy military presence was used to disguise the efforts of the mission scientists headquartered in Cairo. They would operate under the guise of Arab peasants or Russian officers. To speed things up, in 1959 the KGB recruited professional informationalists to wiretap Egyptian officials. This paid of in July 24, 1960 when a conversation was recorded that would then change myth into reality. The official had been given a call that two Bedouin had stumbled upon the tomb of the visitor. The Bedouin were in the hospital and kept repeating, the visitor God. At this moment in time, 
Project ISIS became top priority and all efforts were made to immediately follow up by having the Bedouin show them where they had found this tomb. SEIFI was able to purchase several documents and film footage as to the KGB documentations of their findings. Taken out of Egypt and brought to the secret facility of the KGB was this. Memo to high-ranking KGB official. My agents had secured the notes of one of the scientists working on the tomb of the visitor findings. Another was the inventory of contents taken from the tomb as follows. Location of finding. Undisclosed, 15 crates of relics, one partially mummified body, one stone sarcophagus, eight hieroglyphic samples. Old report from a project scientist that was one of the first to enter the tomb. During the inspection of the wall segment we noted that a strange magnet repulsive force seemed to be emanating from the rock. We were unable to find any scientific explanation cryptologist report. Partial decoded message on tomb wall indicating a prophecy of the return of the winged gods. The Kremlin took the cryptologist report very seriously. KGB was ordered to determine target locations e planets, stars, galaxies. They had to duplicate the stars as they would have been over Giza thousands of years ago. They finally found it, in the stars and constellation of Orion during the year 10,500 BC. Although it was possible that the builders could have been working off plans of a time before the pyramids was constructed this was proven not to be the case. Metal and synthetic materials of tomb were determined to be of unknown origin and the tomb was carbon dated giving it a dating of 10,500 BC meaning the pyramid had to have been made at 10,500 BC. Kins of film were purchased by SEIFI through the Russian Mafia agent which originally came from the maximum security archives of the KGB. These kins contain film of KGB filming the process of the tomb and sarcophagus being opened. Sci-Fi had this film analyzed before purchasing by experts in this field. Finding no evidence of fraud, SEIFI purchased cans of film. The documentary is in black and white showing soldiers entering the tomb without gas masks. As they opened the sarcophagus, you can see toxic fumes escaping and the reaction of the soldiers as they were being affected. It also shows the mummy contained inside. The film shows the soldiers leaving the tomb fast and then a chemical warfare specialist team comes in with protective clothing. There is talk from one that was there in the tomb, that the energy inside, during the first days of exploration was very very high. They also had a team of psychics go in and do some special readings of the tomb. It later goes on to show the KGB and Bedouin loading trucks with crates to be shipped back to Russia. According to KGB documents, Researchers began to wonder if the pyramid was designed for one particular purpose. They thought it was possibly a machine, being that it was designed like a three-dimensional triangular depiction of a hemisphere. Their thoughts were there must have been a reason why it was designed for resonating with the planet. Their thoughts went to a prism and that the pyramids have powers to alter the cosmic rays, that the pyramids are huge prisms capable of concentrating energy capturing light from the stars which would initiate a process which would turn the pyramid into an interstellar transmitter. The three pyramids in SPHNIX could be integral parts of an immense machine designed by alien engineers linked by a master control mechanism inside the Great Pyramids. They noted that the passageway goes to main chamber. And above the sarcophagus was a tunnel of star shaft. They reason that when a specific star alignment occurs a streak of energy goes down the shaft. Scientists speculated that the radiant energy hitting the sarcophagus could initiate something similar to a cold fusion reaction. The prism structure of the pyramid would then magnify and transfer to the corresponding pyramids. A unifed beam of energy could erupt creating a cosmic beacon used by alien starship for future navigating. According to ancient legends all around the world, they all have the same thing in common. The visitors were like men but more like gods. They were giants. They traveled among the stars. They brought us the knowledge. Legends of the first emperors of China were called the sons of heaven and made the first pyramids of China. Mexico and Yucatan have similar legends. Star walkers can be found throughout Egyptian texts and s. American folklore. The visitors are described as the giants man slash gods giants or titans. And it seems. 
All cultures may be traced to a single parent civilization could it be E.T.? Later on in the documentary, it shows them working on the mummy attempting to give it a face and identity. A computer projection of the mummy was made as it laid in the sarcophagus. Experts that were there to observe the floor scenic reconstruction of the face described to sci-fi that if they had not been there themselves, they would not have believed what the face revealed after reconstruction. When skull and face was completed, it showed a humanoid type large cranium large eyes, small chin. Small teeth but not earth humanoid but some being that had to have been extraterrestrial. Later, using underground radar technology, the KBG found a passageway under the tomb of the visitor directly below was a large chamber. They believed they found the chamber of knowledge, but was afraid to open the tomb, thinking it could be a Trojan horse. Capable of blowing up the entire planet. They decided to seal the tomb, wipe away the location of the tomb and close the project. It seemed however that all were affected by the discovery. Some had personality changes. Some disappeared entirely others committed suicide and others no longer could support their old religious beliefs. The first official report of sightings, that we are aware of, was by King Tutkrimini about 3400 years ago. Sightings continued through the ages. Sightings seemed to pick up with man mastered the skies. But when we conquered the inner workings of the atom, the aliens of Orion stepped up their observation with an explosion of UFO sightings that continue up to the present. UFO abduction reports began to sweep around the world in the early 60s. A pattern was developing with nearly all abductees reporting physical examinations, insertion of objects and artificial inseminations. Many women abductees believed they were being impregnated to give birth to alien hybrids. In the last decade reports such as these have risen dramatically. It may be highly likely that the genetic colonization program that started back in the ancient times has resumed. The question was asked could they be cloning themselves by implanting their alien genes into human bah? Are humans being transformed into an alien species through genetic engineer? The ancient Egyptians have always said that our DNA came from the heavens and that someday they would return. Did the KGB discover the truth in the chamber of knowledge about the true agenda of the Yet? And what was discovered on the wall of the tomb of the visitor prophesies that they would return. But when? Secrets cannot be contained. Not even KGB secrets. A group of scientists, computer programs, doctors, etc. shortly after the discovery of the tomb of the visitor, came together to discuss the possibilities of this discovery. They fully believed that the visitor was none other than Osiris, the alien king. Thus they gave themselves the name, the followers, based off the followers of Horus in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. According to Egyptian beliefs a family of gods came from the stars to Egypt. They were the ones that gave the people of Egypt the knowledge and wisdom. Later they left earth back to their star homes, except for Osiris. He stayed and taught the followers. It ws their duty to protect and keep the ancient knowledge he gave them until his return. The Egyptians were astronomers and fully understood that the stars were the map to the great god Osiris and the afterlife. Modern followers would secretly come together in their homes to discuss the possibility of the return of Osiris. They believed that the second coming of Osiris would herald a new age for mankind. They believed that when the tomb was discovered and the seal was broken, a signal was transmitted to the visitors. They calculated and estimated the time it would take for the electromagnetic signal to reach the constellation of Orion. They figured that they could return no earlier than April 23, 1985. With that time frame in mind, the group left Russia and took off to Egypt. Never to return. The only remains left behind of their meeting with the visitors was a newspaper clippage found in the KGB archives of a group of tourists disappearing in the middle of the night in Egypt. 1985. And one home movie project with film. This film showed the group in front of the pyramid at night. It shows a light appearing in the sky, the group dropping to their knees in prayer the light becoming brighter and then nothingness. A daughter of parents that were part of this group was shown the home video by the SEIFI team, of which she recognized her parents and burst into tears.
Did anyone happen to see a documentary on sci-fi called Secret KGB UFO Files? I happened to catch this yesterday and why I'm leaning to the side of skepticism. I have to admit that it was intriguing, basically the story goes. In the early 60s the KGB discovered a tomb at the Giza Plateau containing an ever. Luckily there was film footage ha ha. The grainy film contained footage of archaeologists dressed in KGB gear opening the tomb of what was thought to be an ancient Egyptian king. When they do, toxic smoke overcomes one of them and the other two run out. It is later learned that the body isn't human. The footage looked as if it had been produced to look old. Also, included were shots of psychics levitating in the tomb. One thing that caught my attention is the archaeologist that was supposed to have been claimed by the toxic smoke was later helping move creates of evidence down some stairs. Despite the curious film footage, the documentary was very interesting and had me glued from the jump. For decades, American agencies have stockpiled information on UFOs. So did their counterparts behind the Iron Curtain, soldiers, scientists and spies all paint a disturbing picture of the KGB's secret campaign. Is this the stunning proof that the Soviets recovered something not from this earth? When US researchers began looking into just how much the Soviet government knew about UFOs and extraterrestrial visitation, they were not surprised to learn that the Russians took the subject very seriously. What they didn't expect was evidence of ancient alien visitation, paranormal properties associated with related artifacts, and most shocking of all, of a mass abduction in 1985, among the piles of materials obtained from former Soviet spies. Some extremely puzzling and disturbing documents and film footage surfaced confirming rumors, which had been circulating for decades, in the late 1950s and 60s. The Russians became very interested in a number of unusual and newly discovered archaeological sites in Egypt by interpreting ancient symbols. One of those sites was believed to contain the remains of a life form not from Earth. Startling top secret film footage, never before seen outside the Kremlin, confirms the Soviet mission to recover and analyze these remains. Join host Roger Moore in an exclusive investigation into one of the most compelling events of our time.